Well, here we are at Tuval Stadium, family, another Family Ties Productions of Mac Football. Today we're here at Tuval Stadium with a matchup between the Bend North Bulldogs and Danport Central Blue Devils. With me tonight is Cy Robinson. Well, Cy, set us up here. Okay, Jess, we're ready for the kickoff tonight, and uh, Central is uh, going to kick off to Bettendorf, and that's Brian Hansen, number one, lining up to kick off the ball. And uh, we got a real brisk wind coming from our right to left here, and flag's blowing straight out. And as you're going to see on the camera, that feels pretty sloppy out there. And again, uh, I think I've said this on several fields this year, that this uh, field looks as bad as I've ever seen a, a Bettendorf uh, football field. So there's been a lot of action on this field evidently this year. So we're lined up for the kickoff, and uh, I think somebody's going to have to hold the ball so that Hanson can kick it because the wind's blowing it off the tee. Well, Davenport Central comes in with a 4-4 four and four record. Bettendorf Bulldogs come in with a record of 6-2. and two. Right, uh, and Central's tied for third place. There's five people with 4-4 four and four records. Here we go. Kick is received by McFedder. He's coming right up the middle, coming right up the middle. And a good return out to about the 38, Jess. Uh, the, bo the ball hit the floor, hit the ground out there and hit him in a kneecap. When he picked it up and got going, he got a good return out of it. Well, the tackle was by number four for Davenport Central. Okay. Number four is Marshall Frazier, 150-pound senior. And uh, Central lining up in their 40 defense. We'll set that defense for you pretty soon. Here comes... Uh, Bettendorf in their I formation. Two receivers wide left and split right. Open up with a little inside trap play for about a four yard gain. Hand by off, uh, hand off number 33. Yep. Number 33 is Numkina, the big hard charging junior fullback for Bettendorf, 205 pound junior. I think number 63 for Central made the tackle. Number 63 is uh, for Central, making the tackle. That's Jeff Huntington, the 6'1", 230-pound senior. Same formation for Bedendorf. Okay, we saw a, saw a little sweep right there. Just pitch it to the to the uh, tailback McFedries and uh, Numkina leading the play for a little bit of gain, maybe a couple yards. 42 made the tackle. Okay. Jess is gonna be a good spotter for me. I can tell that if I can just uh, get my uh, brains out here, we're ready to go. <laughs> Kenny Gile, the outside linebacker on the tackle there. If you're wondering where the wild man is at, the wild, not the wild man, Dan Buritz. <laughs> Dan is a little under the weather, we understand. He's now, at, he's I, at throat problems. Yeah. I take that to mean he's probably got a, a date tonight or something, but maybe not. Oh, Central looks like they jumped, but it looks like they got back. McFedries. Good job by McFedries. Uh, Central's left linebacker, I think that was uh, 65. 65 or came through and put a lot of pressure on. That really forced to play wider than Bettendorf wanted to run it. Good tackle here on the, by the Central, uh, or by the Bettendorf bench, by number 65 from Central, uh, Dyson Miguel, 210-pound junior linebacker. Bettendorf now punt formation from their own 46. And looks like Central's going to let the ball hit and roll into the wind. Tough punt. Okay. Number 76 the makes the tag. Makes the, uh, so Central holds, and uh, they'll take over at their own 33. You want to set up the Central offense here quickly? Central offense, uh, we're probably going to see uh, Tony Sisk at quarterback, number five. Uh, James Thomas back at tailback. Joe Hildebrand at fullback, and Ricky McBride will be one of the wides. And Dave McDonald splitting out uh, toward us here, number 84, and Marcel Howard, big number 82 on the opposite side. Central in a trips formation to the right. Three receivers over there, and Sis gonna just pull it down and run a keeper. We got, we got a, flag. a flag, yeah, we got a flag. That's probably gonna be a 
It's probably going to be a hold in that area, I'd say. 44 and 35 made the tackle. Okay. And it is a hold. The preliminary call is holding against the Blue Devils. So that's probably going to move it back to about uh, replay the down. It's going to be about second 20. Not sure Number if Bettendorf, 40. yeah, Bettendorf did uh, accept a penalty. Number 44 is Chris Wenzel, and who did I say the other guy was? Uh, On D. I think you said 63. Okay. Nate Wetzel, 215-pound senior. Good spot, Jess. I'll get with you here shortly. <laughs> okay, Central in uh, again. Three receivers to the right side with uh, the speed demon out there, Ricky McBride in the middle of them. Howard and a uh, central in a shotgun formation throws out and a nice. Yes. Nope, it's incomplete, it's incomplete out there. To number 80. Yep. Pass is incomplete. I think that was number 80. Uh, almost made a nice catch over there was Kyle Gott, 6'2", uh, senior. 180 pounder. He was open. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to throw the ball out there, Jess. It's gonna be slippery and there's gonna be a little mud on it. And it's windy. It's real windy. And they're, and they're throwing with the wind here. That's gonna help them a little bit. Yeah, the flags are are blowing in a central direction. Okay, central on the shotgun again. Incomplete. Incomplete to number 84 was the intended. I think that's a Dave McDonald. And number 28 for the Bulldogs. Was, Good uh, uh, defensive Craig, coverage there Craig by Cook. Craig Cook, number uh, 28. He's a 175 pound senior. Mm -hmm. On defense for the Bulldogs, we have Jason Fag. Or is that was that? Jason? That's Jason Sage. Sage. Just having a little trouble reading my writing. Todd Zambrano, Nate Wetzel, Jimmy Smith, and Alex Alex Short. Alex Short, yeah. That'd be their and front also five. Chris Wenzel, Bob Rob Colvin, and we'll get. Dusty Colvin, Craig Cook, Chris Kins Kinsler, uh -huh. and, and Sandra Trent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, That's Central in the defense. gun again. They got third and a whole bunch. And we got a whistle and a flag, so it looks like somebody's probably lined up uh, in the neutral, in the neutral zone. zone. And, uh, of course, everybody's pointing at each other. And they're going to call it on Bettendorf. Bettendorf. So uh, <laughs> won't hurt them too badly, except that's a third and 13 now instead of a third and uh, 18. But Central will come out in the shotgun maybe again. Looks like, uh, sounds like they, or looks like they plan on throwing the ball quite a bit tonight. Well, I think if they do, it's a big task for them because it is windy, even though the wind is in their direction, mm -hmm. and uh, it's muddy. Okay, so this back to throw. Long throw. Throwing a bomb way downfield. Over everybody's head. <laughs> uh, who knows who that was intended for? It had to be either 80 uh, Kyle God or number three, I think, uh, McBride. So that brings up a fourth, and they'll be in punt formation. And back uh, punting for Central will be uh, Hanson again, and uh, he's a good kicker. Back receiving for Bettendorf will be number uh, 33, uh, Nate Namkina, and number 34, Andy McFedries. And he's in the bad part of the field, though, where he's going to kick the mm -hmm. uh, side. A little sloppy there. Good kick, though. He got it up in the wind. This is McFedries. McFedries. Got a couple blockers in front of him over there. Look out. Good return by Andy McFedries up to the 44-yard line. Number 52 made the tackle. Okay, number 52 uh, for Central, Sean Dormeyer, uh, Dormeyer on the tackle, 200-pound uh, senior. First and 10, Bulldogs. All right. From about their own 44-yard line. I will set the uh, Bulldog offensive front for you. At uh, one tackle is Andy Ganadovich, uh, Jr., Chad Burke, a Jr., Tim McCarthy, a Jr., at center, Mike Schlosser, a senior at the other guard, and Adam Fay, the big uh, right tackle for Bettendorf. And just an isolation play on the, to the right side to McFedries, uh, maybe a one yard gain.
Looks like Coach Hobnick's going to have them run over here where the green grass is, uh, Jess. Keep them out of the mud out right, there. Right, right. You can see where the mud is in the center of the field. Central's uh, front four, Andy Erpelding, number 51. Doug Nixon, number 76. Eric Hike, number 79. Pass. A little uh, out pattern to... Number two. Uh, Number out padding, that pattern to uh, Pat Franks, one of the re wide receivers over there. And number five for Central made the tackle. Tony Sisk on the tackle. Sisk is on the tackle. Yep. Tony Sisk makes the tackle. All I was, Jess, they just uh, ran a little, uh, about a four yard out pattern, and uh, it was there. And that. that uh, Sisk, Sisk is on the ground once, and when he turns around, you can see that his, his jersey. Right. That's the last time we're going to see his number. We're, uh, <laughs> as this game progresses, folks, we're going to have some problems. We can probably identify him posi by position unless they have a substitute in there, and uh, then it's going to be trouble. Okay, Bettendorf in uh, two wide out receivers fumble. over here. we got a fumble. Central thinks they have it. Central thinks they have it, but the well, referees the think they don't. The so that's going to bring up a fourth and four. And so far we got a punt match going on. Okay, in the punt for Bettendorf is going to be number 10, uh, Pat Frank, I believe. I'm sorry, that's Jason Smith for crying out loud. A reasonable effort into the win. Bounces back. Then North makes. Yeah, they got a central bounce and. Uh, so Central's going to take over on their own 32. And setting the central offensive line from tackle to tackle. Eric Hike number 79. Josh Lane number 66. Andy Erpelling is a center, number 51, coming up over the ball. Sean Dormeyer, number 52, and Jeff Huntington, number 63, if we don't have too much mud on the jerseys. Hard hit by number 44. Quick handoff to the fullback, uh, Joe Hildebrand. Number 44 was the first one there. A lot of, a lot of black shirts in on the tackle in the middle of the line there. He was, uh, Hildebrand was smacked pretty good right there, but he gained a yard out of it. Forty-four was Chris Wenzel. Chris Wenzel, uh, one of the Bettendorf linebackers, and Rob Colvin, two very good linebackers for Bettendorf. Colvin, number thirty-seven, back in the shotgun for Central. Got him spread on the field, wide open, but pass intended for number eight. Uh, and Bettendorf's number eight's mm -hmm. the only one he got a hand on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pass was intended to for Frank, I believe. And thrown a little bit behind. Did have receivers open. If he can find them and throw to them, this will give uh, what they're trying to do here, Jess, is spread Bettendorf out as much as they can and make them play as much pass coverage as they can. Back in the shotgun, they got uh, two receivers to each side, the double slot set. And once again overthrown. Yep, number overthrown eight. to number 80. Got That's uh, God. Yep, God again brings and fourth down. And number eight was there for Bettendorf. Number eight uh, on the de defensive play for Bettendorf. And we'll identify him. John Bloom. Good play. Num Keenan, McFedry's back. And in the punt for Hanson, or for Central, is uh, Hanson. Who's going to punt with the wind again? He slipped the last time that he punted. I mean, he he, he was real tippy toe. But right. Yeah, it's a little, and he's, it's he's little dangerous again. out there. Okay, McFedry's again. Good good corner block set. Now Kena throws one. McFedry's is still up. There he goes. And a host of Central Blue Devils finally bring him down. McFedry's on the punt return. A host would mean a lot then, huh? That's a lot. Okay. All right, here we go. If Sanders was here, he'd say that's more than we can count. Ah, <laughs> uh, what does he know? <laughs> okay. 
setting uh, linebackers for Central. We gave you the lineman a while ago. We got uh, Kenny Gile, number 42, Dyson McGuell, 65, Joe Hillebrand, 44, and uh, Adam Holcomb, I believe, 83, and McVedries. Good hitting going on out there by the Blue Devil defense. Got a flag on a play. Just a sweep. They tried to run a sweep there, and Central's doing a good job of uh, of uh, spreading that sweep out so they don't go north and south with it. Penalty's going to be on Bendorf. Okay. So a big penalty against Bendorf is going to take it back on about to about their own uh, 28. And we're going to have first and a whole lot. A clip is from the spot of the foul, so it's going to be even a little bit better in that form. It's going to take it back to oh, about the 20. That's a big, big penalty. Yeah. About the 27-yard well, line. The scoreboard says first and 98. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't make any difference when you got first and whatever this is. Well, it says it's only first and 17. I don't know. That's definitely wrong. Okay, we got an option coming. Option. But Jason Smith with the ball finds a little seam and picks up about eight yards on a play. Yeah, we had the lead option coming there, and uh, Smith, rather than pitch the ball, found a little uh, seam out there inside and turned it up and got a little gainer out of it. Second and 15 or 16, I suppose. Setting the uh, defensive backs for Central. Ricky McBride, number three, on the near side. It's a pass, number four. This is number four on the reception for Bendorf, uh, Marshall Frazier. I'll tell you, Smith did a nice job there, rolling to his right, had a little bit of pressure on him from a firing linebacker, and uh, got the ball off, fired a perfect shot to Frazier, and they picked up another uh, oh, eight, nine yards. Well, I said McBride made the tackle, and I tell you what, mm -hmm. and then that is now that you see this number in the front, but in the back, when he was getting up, you couldn't tell. Well, uh, hopefully he'll stay off his belly tonight so we can identify him, huh? So we got a third and uh, eight coming up. So Bettendorf has uh, got some of this yardage back, quite a bit of it back for that matter. Okay, double side, double wide Pass. receivers to the far side. Uh, Smith back to throw, and he's gonna he's be gonna sacked. Be, oh, no, he's, no, he's not. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, he down. ran. <laughs> Smith ran about 32 yards there to lose to, I believe. <laughs> well, it looked like uh, somebody had him in the grasp over there, and there's no in the grasp rule in the high school football. We know that. And, but uh, we did, Central did uh, manage to get the sack. So we got fourth and, uh, yeah, fourth and nine. And looks like uh, McBride back deep for Central as well as James Thomas, I believe. Well, with 3.18 left in the first quarter, nobody's been able to get a real good field position. And Bettendorf's kicking game into the wind is, God, they got a little more. That was, a, for an ugly punt, he got a, got a pretty good roll out of it, Jess. Yes, he did. Okay, Central's ball. I think all the punts are gonna be ugly tonight. Yeah, so. <laughs> they could be. Hanson, though, has booted the ball well with the wind. All right, first down on about Central's own 35. And Wetzel and the two big tackles for Bettendorf, Zambrano and Smith. 76, no, that's Adam Fay, number 76. 65, 260. Pass complete. Nice, nice, nice pass, pass reception there. Number 28 made the tackle for Bettendorf. Looks like 84, I believe, Dave McDonald, Jess. Uh, nice throw there. And 28 made the tackle. Yep. 28, uh, Craig Cook, the strong safety for Bettendorf. 175 pounds senior. It's nicely thrown ball, second and about two. 
Speaking of Adam Fay, I talked to his mother earlier this week, and uh, she said to say good things about Adam. Well, uh, well so I, far. Well, I don't think we've ever said anything <laughs> so bad things about him, have we? <laughs> well, I haven't. Dan probably did, but I, I haven't. <laughs> no, I don't think Dan did. All right. Okay, here comes Central on a little uh, play to the outside. It was designed to go off tackle, I believe, because they had a guard pulling with it, but... Uh, Eight and 35 made the yep. tackle. Nice hit. James Thomas is able to pick up a first down. Uh, there wasn't much there, and he flipped it to the outside, and uh, he does have some wheels. He can fly. 32 was Dusty Colvin, and number eight was, well, I'll see. Now. Number eight help out on the tackle. Yeah, That's uh, John Bloom, a 165-pound uh, junior for Bettendorf. Okay, here comes Central at their own 45, first down. And they're back in the eye formation. A little pro formation here. We'll flank her right. Same play. Same play, and they ran it where they were supposed to this time and picked up about four yards on it, uh, Jess. That's, that play is designed to run, I believe, off tackle, and they turned to get it, got it, they got it turned up that time. Good gainer. Be second and six. And we are, uh, I think Central is now without numbers, would you say? <laughs> right. But they're, you know, I'm surprised that he, he did have a good gainer because even just seeing the, either in that part of the field that is that's not a, in good shape. You're right. That's a, that field a little bit ugly over there by the far hash. All the way up and down from uh, Pass. 20 to 20. Okay. Long Sits one. back to throw. Throws the bomb again. Oh. And... That was uh, McBride, McBride throwing to McBride and just off the fingertips. And uh, he had a step on the defender over there, uh, the Number cornerback. 32. Uh, 32. Yeah, he had a step on Dusty Colvin over there, but uh, ball overthrown. I'll tell you what, Sis can wing that thing, and he's got a little wind behind him. That helps him even more. So Central's going to keep Bettendorf a little bit loose with uh, making him cover the deep one once in a while. Third and uh, six. I don't think we're going to say too many times he could go all the way. He, yes, he could. <laughs> because of the, of the weather. Pass. Complete. Nice. Nicely done. Sis completed to uh, number 80. 84, Dave McDonald, 195 pounds, six foot three senior for Central. And eight and 28 yep. made the tackle. Well, that time, Jez, they kept, they're in there. Uh, what I call a double slot formation. They got uh, two slots in tight, and then they widen up both ends way out on the field. And uh, you got to use your that spreads your defense about out quite a bit. And that's a little tough to cover, especially when Sisk uh, wings that ball like that. Yeah. Craig Cook was one of them who made the tackle. Cook on the tackle. Okay. And number, and number eight, and I don't remember what his name is. Same formation here for Central in the shotgun. This is uh, Sisk, and he's going to. Got some yardage. Go off tackle with it. That's a good change up out of the shot going formation. Uh, you have a assist following his uh, second six. Looks like somebody's uh, shaking up a little bit there. Well, they called, they called the timeout side. Do you think that that's because they, they want the win for one more play? Because there's only seven seconds. Well, yeah, I would. I would say so. Yeah. They want that. Win. I don't know. I. I so would be, bet they would air one out right yeah, here. Yeah, that's that's what I'm. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. They they, they want to want the win behind them. May pick up another 10, 15 yards, which they are in Bettendorf territory. Right. The ball's right on the right on what right on the 30, 30 yard line. 30 yard line. So they've moved the ball this uh, series pretty well by throwing the ball and uh, not throwing it long, but uh, just well, throwing some ice out. Well, yeah, well, they they, yeah, they've thrown it long a couple of times. But Sisk has a very strong arm, and uh, I, I look for them to slow uh, throw the ball into the wind, too. And they're having some success with that, and then every once in a while they'll throw in a run like they did a, uh, a couple plays ago, and Sisk followed the fullback up through for a pretty good gainer. So let's see what happens here. Seven seconds left in the first quarter here at Tuvel Stadium in Bettendorf. Uh, Cox Cable Channel 38, Jess Medina and Cy Robinson here tonight. And we're missing our old, our, our partner Dan Burridge is a little bit under the weather tonight, so he didn't want that, want people to hear that raspy golden voice, voice that, well, it's, <laughs> that turned raspy, huh? Uh, it's really raspy. There he goes, another All pass, right. just like we thought. 
Wide oh, open down is. there. He, he got away. Wide open down there was number 30 for uh, Central, John Lee. And number six for Ben, don't we have the tackle? Number six yeah. is Number six, Jason, Jason Sage, Sage. Uh, one of the defensive ends making the tackle down there, but after a very good gain. So at the end of the first quarter, it's scoreless between the Ben North Bulldogs and the Danforth Central Blue Devils here at Tuval Stadium. Diane DeBoard would love to help you plan your next party. She specializes in ethnic hors d'oeuvres and a large variety of unique cuisine. From the simplest to the most elegant affairs, call Diane DeBoard Catering. Okay, we're back. Uh, second quarter at Tuville Stadium in Bettendorf, where uh, Central has moved the ball down the field here a little bit. Just throwing and passing, mixed up pretty well. Coach Lonnie Wilkinson's got a good game plan going on. Uh, Central now is back in their double slot in the shotgun uh, double slot with a lot of receivers out wide and they're throwing again. A lot of time. Oh, he threw into a crowd. Yeah, he did throw into a crowd that time. And that, uh, but he had to get rid of it because somebody was just. Yeah, he was down. getting pressure. It's hard to tell. We're, we're starting to have problems now identifying players because of the numbers and uh, because of the lighting, uh, the glaring uh, light off the windows here. I think he got lucky on two counts. He lucky he didn't, he's lucky he didn't get sacked, and he's lucky he didn't yep. get intercepted. Good pass coverage there by Bettendorf. They converged on the ball, and they had everybody covered, and uh, they had pressure on the quarterback. And those are the things you have to do to play uh, defense. Again, shotgun formation. Snap by Erpelding, and quarterback sneak. there goes Sisk going again. He just looks for an opening and goes. And he's going to be real close to first down. Boy, if he went to the outside, he'd have probably got mm -hmm. it. There, was, there wasn't anybody there. But that's easy for us to say. Yeah. Well, he started up the middle with the... Uh, he started up the middle and then kind of veered it to the outside and is blocking back in front of him, I think. I believe it's number... Colvin got the tackle. Well, we really can't tell what the... Up back number is now, uh, whether that is Hildebrand, or I really can't tell at this point. Now in a one back, Sisk up under, and they're going to try to grind out for the I first down. I don't think he got it. It's going to be close. If anything, he looks like he lost maybe a foot on the play. It's pretty crucial here. I think uh, Central needs to keep this drive going, needs to get this first down. Uh, if they're going to if they're going to be in this game, and I, I think we'd have to consider them uh, fairly heavy underdogs tonight, but they're certainly capable of uh, beating anybody in the league. That's for sure. Well, the Bettendorf fans are all Bettendorf fans fired up a little bit. I hope the uh, bleachers don't fall. <laughs> what do you say, quarterback sneak? Uh, I, think, I think we're going to have to run something a little bit to the outside here. And you call it, Jess, and he he's not going to make it, it, is he? He didn't get it. Unless his second effort might have got it for him, but initially he was just uh, ripped in there. Well, I don't know. Uh, are they going to measure it? Yes, they are. They're going to measure. I tell you what, I didn't. I didn't think he got it unless they gave him a. Well, it had to be. It had to be on a second effort because I, it looked like the nose guard. I believe it was Nate Wetzel. Uh, really came in tough. And they did well, make it. it. Okay. Well, I'm one for two. I called the quarterback sneak. Yep. And I, I didn't think he got the first down. Yep. I didn't look for him to do that because they had it so stacked up in the middle, and uh, but they were able to. Able to make that first down, Sean Dormile, Andy Erpelding, Josh Lane in there. Did a good enough job to get the first down right up that gut. Okay, Central, first down on the Bettendorf uh, nine. Back in the eye formation. 
We're going to see a little kick out block by the fullback, and it's nice stuffed in there pretty good by the 30, uh, 35. Yeah, the outside linebacker. Uh, Dan Schmidt, I believe, number 35, was it? Yeah, yeah 35. Okay. So, Bettendorf, you know, we're seeing some different people in the game tonight for Bettendorf than uh, we saw the last time we had them. So whether they got a few owies or they're uh, testing some people, we don't know. But a good job defense in that play. Uh, it was a fullback kickout block on the end. You lead post down on the tackle. And uh, the defensive end came across, did a good job there. Erpelling up over the ball. Central's back now in their eye formation with a wing right. Pass. And it's a pass. run action pass and there he is. Oh, intercepted. intercepted in the end zone. Uh, intercepted in the end zone. My number 80. Jess. Uh, 88. I'll tell you what, if Sis could have seen, he had Martell Howard wide open in the end zone early, but he waited. He brought the ball back down, waited, and threw it back behind. And the flow of the defensive backs uh, came over and made the play. And that's, I, that's number 88. Number 88 picked the ball off for uh, the Bulldogs, and that's num uh, number, uh, let's see, 88, Chris Kinsler, 6'2", 175-pound junior. And first down, Bulldogs at their own 20. Two receivers wide left for Bettendorf in the I formation. <laughs> kind of a little, uh, look like a cross buck play and they give the first man through for a, eh, maybe a two, three inch gain. Tell me, Cy, do, does, <laughs> Bet, does Bettendorf need this victory or are they they are sure to be in the playoffs? Well, I I believe they're assured of being in the playoffs. Uh, they're six and two even now. Though, even though even though they'd be six and three. Yeah, I I think they're assured of being in the playoffs. Although I'm not positive about that, but I believe six and three will get you in this year in the state of Iowa. Uh, there's just there's just a lot of seems like there's a lot of parity in the leagues this year, especially in the MAC conference, where there's five Somebody teams. pitch out. Yeah. Nope. Quarterback keeps it. Okay, Smith's uh, running the option and decides to keep it. Turns it up for a three or four yard gain. Tackled by Miguel, one of the one of the uh, linebackers for Central. As we were saying a minute ago, there's five teams in the MAC uh, tied for third place. So not much of a chance other than two teams to go out of our conference. Bettendorf, uh, two receivers wide away from us. I formation, and it's going to roll out to his right. Smith is, and it's picked off. Central. And I'm sure Smith Weezy had that back. Ball intercepted by, uh, well, it's hard to tell. 40, no, 7. Is it? It's, it's real hard is to it? tell. It's uh, this 84. Yeah, 84. Uh, that would be uh, McDonald. One of the ends, or one of the defensive ends and offensive ends for Central, Dave McDonald. Fine pass, job of pass covering. Smith forced the ball a little bit there, and uh, he paid the price for it. McDonald's a 6-3, so he's uh, tough he's to throw out. over. And uh, Bettendorf. yeah, Bettendorf's going to take a timeout here. Central's going to have the ball. First down on the uh, Bettendorf 15 yard line and we're going to take just a short little break here. Okay, Jess, we're back. Uh, 741 left in the second quarter here and Central just picked the ball off and they got first down on the Bettendorf 15. Back in the shotgun formation again. He's going to try another pass. He's going to get sacked. A lot of pressure. And he throws it up. Yeah. He, he's, well, he, they threw it up for grabs. Well, he, he did a pretty good job there, I think, of throwing the ball away. He threw it kind of a, to an open spot there. But uh, excellent pass coverage by the Bedendorf secondary. And uh, he, I'll tell you what, he has just got a lot of pressure on him from number 43. Uh, I believe it was 43 for Bedendorf. And... Uh, that would be Ryan Swanks do, but I'll have to double check that number. Swanks do a 6'1", 185-pound uh, senior. 
Central's up second and ten. We're pelting over the ball. Central's back in the eye formation. Flanker right, split left, and here's a pitch quick out. pitch to the left. Fine defensive play again by, by number 43. Ryan swings to the uh, defensive end to the far side. 79 made the tackle for uh, Bettendorf. Okay. And that is number 79, Todd Zambrano, 250-pound junior, makes the tackle. So we got third and uh, about eight. Central comes out in the gun again. They're going to try to throw it. Tell you what now, incomplete. Uh, the ball almost looks sick. Uh, looked, uh, yeah, sticky to throw. Slipped out of his hand there. And the one thing a Bedendorf's doing now, Jess, is they're putting pressure on the passer, and that's and that's what you have to do uh, when you got a team that's throwing the ball like this that much. If you can pressure the quarterback and hurry the throw, then that's what you got. You got the wobbly duck thrown out there, plus throwing a little mud on the ball. Are they going to try and kick? Yeah, uh, Hanson's very capable of kicking this ball that far, I believe, if he's got if he's got the footing enough to do it. Well, how about a fake? So, uh, how about a fake, Si? Uh, now, he's... Uh, he's uh, yeah, the snap was high, Jess, and uh, the holder didn't get a town, so they, Hanson had to hurry it. Yeah, once I saw the high snap, they yep. probably should have went. Yep. I really didn't look for the fake there because I think he has leg enough to kick the ball that far. But uh, Bettendorf, again, an excellent job uh, playing defense down there and, and forcing the bad kick. So they're going to take over on their own 20, uh, first and 10. But as you can see, though, they are in the, probably the worst Thank part you. of the field. Yep. It really is, uh, really is ugly, the field down there. Okay, Jason Smith, a little counter dive for a good gainer. And I don't think we're going to get the number of them tackled. 42 and 65 made the tackle. Yeah, it looks like uh, 42, Kenny Jow, one of the outside linebackers. He's done a fine job for the Blue Devils this year. 195 pound senior. And 65 also. Linebacker. 65 also in on tackle. Dyson McGuell, one of the. One of their good linebackers. Okay, two wide receivers for Bettendorf in the I formation. Second and five. McFedries. Here comes McFedries. Now he's going to get a first down. Good tough run. A little isolation play to the left side. And uh, I guess if you're a fan, Cy, and, and uh, like to watch some football. You know, this is the kind of game that a lot of people like watching because mm -hmm. the kids are sli slipping and sliding. There's a lot of yeah. mud. <laughs> yeah, uh, they are. This is the John yeah. Madden type game. Yeah, this is uh, here's McFedry's on the option, or uh, excuse me, Smith, Jason Smith on the option again and uh, decides to pull it down. And Well, all I got on the defensive side was number two, but I don't think that's his number. Hard to tell. Can't make out his number. No, I can't either. Smith picked up about four. We're going to have a uh, second and six here, and the ball's on uh, central 36, we'll say. Two wide receivers again out uh, to the right side for Bendorf. Quick pitch. Good blocking up front. <laughs> and ran out of room. I believe on the sweep we'll get a first down out of that. I'll tell you what, we've said it before. I know Dan and I have said this before, Jess, that McFedries has a real knack for staying behind his blockers, and then when the blocks are thrown, he just takes that little seam, and he's able to and just evolve up and get that yardage. And that's what he did there. Right, and that's, a, that's just a sign of an excellent running back, and, uh, and he is an excellent running back. Now, Bettendorf 5 formation of the flanker and the split left. Good job by the by the uh, 
central defense just to off tackle isolation play. They did pick up about three on it. This is a scoreless ball game with 4.44 to go in the second quarter. Mm -hmm. Second and six. I'm from the other side of the creek. What is, what is AR Tuval? I know it's Tuval Stadium, but what is AR? Well, <laughs> I wish you hadn't asked me that because oh, okay. I don't know. Well, forget I, asked. <laughs> I don't know. Forget that I asked. I'm not, I don't know the history of this stadium, but I may find out. Oh, here comes Smith on the option again. And this is what Jason Smith, this is what Jason Smith does very well. He's not a bad thrower, but he runs the option as good as anybody around. Took it down to the and he just yard line uh, central. start out the option there, pull the ball down and, and picks up a bunch. First and 10 Bettendorf on the central now 34 yard line. And here comes uh, Tim McCarthy over the ball, 230-pound junior. Flanker uh, eye formation for Bednarf. Here comes the inside trap again. And they'll pick up about three. Numkina carried the ball. And it looked like number 67, uh, Chad Burke coming across, across on the trap play, uh, coming across at us. Chad's a 270-pound junior, Jess. They got some big people up front. They're able to create some, uh, they're able to create some holes up there. McCarthy on the ball. Well, defensively, Central, yep. Central is not, not looking really for the pass because they're all their, their uh, all the defensive players are, are within three, Three or four feet of the line. Right. When you're sitting in the sitting in the 44 defense, there uh, you have the opportunity to play some people up a little bit tighter on a night like this, and you still got some good speed uh, in the secondary and McBride and uh, Sisk. Uh, nobody's going to outrun those guys back in that secondary back there, so you can afford to put uh, eight people up pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Good point. High flanker for Bettendorf, flanker right, and we got to roll out again, and we're going to. He caught it, number oh. seven. Was that a tip ball? Yes, it was. I believe the ball was thrown. Just that ball was thrown to number 22, uh, number seven, Austin Chesney, and uh, it was a tip ball. And Sam DeTrent was right in the right spot at the right time, and he just caught the ball and strolled in a couple yards and then six points. Flanker for Bettendorf, flanker right. And we got to roll out again, and we're going to he caught it, number oh. seven. Was that a tip ball? Yes, it was. I believe the ball was thrown. Jess, that ball was thrown to number 22, uh, number seven, Austin Chesney, and uh, it was a tip ball. And Sam DeTrent was right in the right spot at the right time, and he just caught the ball and strolled in a couple yards and then six points. But uh, well, I started to say when the ball was thrown, it's over, going to be overthrown and incomplete. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like it. But boy, all of a sudden there was there was the Trent with the catch. That's a good heads up ball, a uh, uh, ball, uh, football play there by Sam De Trent and uh, Coach Hopnick. I've chatted with him this year a little bit, and he thinks De Trent will be their next quarterback, but uh, or candidate. And the extra point is good. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Bettendorf is on the board with seven points. Seven and nothing, Bettendorf, and uh, 231 left in the second quarter. Jess, that was a that was a good play by Detrent. By Detrent. Not only a good play, but I think it's a, a big play for Bettendorf because in this muck and mire, it gets them on the scoreboard. Right, they move the ball down the field from their own 20, and uh, they and got their running game going a little bit. And in this, in these kind of conditions, that was a big drive. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, and that was a kind of a fortunate thing for Bettendorf, but you know what they say, Jess, good teams make their own breaks. Now, I don't know who they is, but uh, I'd have to <laughs> tend to agree with that well, a little bit. I've also heard coaches say that sometimes <laughs> they'd rather be lucky than good. That's right. 
I know that's true on a golf course. <laughs> By the way, how's your slice? Uh, it works pretty good. Okay. Shara kicking off, and that's uh, oh, James Thomas, I believe. And he got hit a couple times, and uh, yeah, James Thomas on a return. He got hit a couple times and was able to come up and uh, gain maybe 15, 16 on a return. I, I think if he wouldn't have slipped and would have, could have got the outside, he would have picked up a lot more yardage. Yeah, I'll tell you, a field like this, I believe, hurts the speed of Central a little bit. Uh, James Thomas and uh, Ricky McBride and, and even Tony Sist, all those three kids can really fly. And you get a slop bucket field, and uh, unfortunately, this uh, rain we've had the uh, past 24 hours has caused some problems. Sisk uh, under pelting here. No gain. No gain. Good job by the Bendorf D out there. and 63 and 37. That's Huntington and uh, Rob Colvin on the tackle. Did I say Huntington? You meant Rob Colvin. Number 37 and 63 for Bettendorf is Nate Wetzel. My mistake. Wetzel, I'm, just, uh, I'm just calling out the numbers. So I yeah. hear you. <laughs> well, I got to read the right page here and I'll be all right. Jeff's doing a great job uh, spotting these numbers for us up here tonight. Okay, I formation for Central. Little fullback track trap given to uh, Joe Hildebrand on the carry. He'll pick up a couple. Bendorf is always stingy from defensive tackle to defensive tackle. With those inside five people, they're always stingy in there. And uh, that's why uh, they're probably pretty close to leading the league in defense. Well, uh, according to my statistics, they're right behind Pleasant Valley. But uh, they are second in the league uh, in defense. And they uh, always play tough. 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Okay, and we got uh, third and about nine. Sisk, uh, get sacked. Oh, nope. Uh, excellent, excellent coverage by the Bendorf secondary back there, and Sisk had to wind up eating the ball back there for about a six, uh, six seven yard loss. And now probably Bendorf's gonna call a timeout here. That's fourth down, and Central's going to have to punt the ball out of there. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in Hanson here. I think he's one of the best uh, kickers in the league, so I look for them to I look for them to get the ball upfield here. 28 seconds to go here in the first half. They need to kind of they need to get a good punt off here, just because Shar can kick the ball too from Bendorf. Excellent kicker and. Uh, with this wind, that gives you about an extra, probably an extra five, 10 yards. And that wind if, still looks pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pulling the flag straight out here. And uh, we got a little bit of a rain coming down now. It's not too bad, but. Uh, More like a mist just blowing across the field. Yeah. Quite a few diehard fans out here tonight, though, for Bettendorf. As usual, Central's got a little bit of a backing over there. Okay, we got fourth and about 16, 17, central and punt formation. And the block. ball's blocked. And one of the linemen picked it up and ran it a couple yards, it looked like. Um, not sure who got the ball, and I'm not sure who blocked it because it looked like about four people were, uh, were there. Okay, well, that's that's a bad break for Central right there, but uh, you kind of knew, you just kind of knew there that Bettendorf was going to come after that punt because of the time left. We've got 21 seconds. Uh, they still got time to run a couple plays and uh, yeah, still they, still get their kick in. So And they do have the wind behind them. So right. So an incomplete pass would not hurt them. So we'll see what Bettendorf decides to do here. Looks like they've called a timeout. John Lavelle out giving a few directions to the Bettendorf offense. 
Well, I don't know. Do you think you might see a, a couple passes because it doesn't make any difference if they get incomplete? They do stop the clock if it is uh, if it is incomplete. I would I would think they'll throw the ball a couple times here. 21 seconds on the clock. Uh, that's time to get. You know, you do it right. You can get uh, at least three plays off in that time. And if they run the ball, they're going to take a lot of time off the scoreboard here. So we'll see. Yeah, they're in a the gun formation. A lot of time to throw. Oh, just excellent the defense there by uh, Ricky McBride, I believe. And the ball was intended for uh, Chesney, one of the wide people, and uh, McBride was right in front of it, and the ball went off, looked like the ball went off both their hands. So still 15 seconds on the clock, second and 10, the ball's on the uh, central 20. I'm sure Bettendorf would like to get a little bit closer for their kicker. Back in the shotgun here, Smith again. Got a receiver open. Touchdown, Bettendorf. Yep. Learned the same play they did before. Sorry. Yep, they did. That's, uh, yep, that's uh, Chesney again on the touch. Fine throw there by Jason Smith, right, right into the hands of uh, Chesney coming across on the post pattern. So we got a 13-0 ball game with the extra point coming up with 10 seconds left in the first half, and that's unfortunate for Central. That's not going to help their cause at all for the mental aspect of the game. And Shara boots the ball out of the on about the third lane of the track. So we got a 14-0 game, Jess. With 10 seconds to go in the yep. first half. Really a bad break for Central, but they are breaks. Yeah, we really and had Cent a. Central, or uh, Bettendorf uh, mm -hmm. did what they had to do. That's one thing about Bettendorf uh, teams, or Coach Hobbinick's teams, uh, you make a mistake, you better buckle it on because they're going to take advantage of it in most cases. And Central's really had a couple chances to score down there, and they blew the opportunity, so they could really, this could really be 7-7 uh, or uh, tied uh, still at this point. But that's why Bettendorf is 6-2 and two and looking for the playoffs, and Central is 4-4. Four and four Yeah, looking, yep, looking you got a season. point. Okay, Shara... Char is going to kick it off, and uh, we got McBride and James Thomas back deep. And probably Sisk, Mickey Sisk, if we could read the numbers. Okay, a little Squib squibber. Kick. Nice job fielding the ball. Look out, look out. He could be gone if Char doesn't make a tackle. Oh, if he'd have cut across the grain on the yep. left side, he'd, he'd have probably went all the way. Well, it was a but, heck of a good return. Yeah, by, but uh, that's the first half, though. Right. The clock ran out. A nice return there by uh, Ricky McBride. Uh, he just got on that sideline up there. And I'll tell you again, Shard did a nice job as safety, the kicker, of forcing the runner back to the inside where the pursuit was. And uh, McBride just about had himself a, a good return there. It was a good return, but a great return. Okay, with a score of 14-0 here at halftime at Tuvel Stadium on Cox Cable Channel 38, we're going to cut for halftime. DARE is an acronym for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It is a drug prevention program that not only focuses on the negative aspects of drugs, but the positive side of life. DARE teaches young people how to resist peer pressure to take drugs and to resist the pressure to join gangs. Community schools with their local police or sheriff's department offer a 17-week DARE program to teach kids to say no to drugs and gangs. DARE, Dare to, to make, make a, a difference. difference. Thank you. 
is a simple acronym for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It's a drug prevention program that not only focuses on the negative aspects of drugs, but also on the positive side of life. DARE helps teach young people how to resist peer pressure to take drugs and to resist the pressure to join gangs. Community schools with their local police department offer the 17-week DARE program. DARE to make a difference. Diane DeBoard would love to help you plan your next party. She specializes in ethnic hors d'oeuvres and a large variety of unique cuisine. From the simplest to the most elegant affairs, call Diane DeBoard Catering. So we're going to start Caroline to kick off for the Bulldogs. Okay, Jess, we're back, uh, ready for the second half here on Cox Cable, Channel 38 at Tuville Stadium in Bettendorf, Iowa. And we got the uh, Bettendorf Bulldogs visited by the Davenport Central Blue Devils. And we're ready for the kickoff. Uh, Scott Shaw is ready to go out there. And uh, right the, now. He's got the wind behind him. And boy, I, he, yep. he, he's capable of kicking it in the end zone. He'll be able to boom it. And here it goes. And uh, we got. Uh, oh, he squibbed it. Yep. Not taking a chance with back there with that speed of uh, Central. And now I believe that is. Uh, <laughs> We should tell you that it's getting harder and harder to read these numbers, folks, on this on this muddy field. Basically, they say, I can't okay. Figure, can't figure it out, Cy. Si. Yeah. Uh, when the game started, we had a lot of people in front of us, and then yeah. they're the, all gone. The public address announcer saves our life. It was Ricky McBride on the return. <laughs> he's so we got. Uh, he's guessing. <laughs> so we got first down uh, in Central Territory on their own 32. So oh, they're, they're the fans. We thought they'd abandoned us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some diehard Bettendorf fans out here tonight watching the Bulldogs. The last regular season game tonight for for all the Iowa high school teams. Central and a shotgun coming right out throwing. Wide open underneath and complete. complete. To uh, looks like 84 uh, Dave McDonald again on a about a four-yard gain. You know, my guess before my guess before we even knew, I guess it would be McDonald. Mm -hmm. He just he just seems to be the number one. Yeah, and from also from where uh, from where he came from on the pattern, we can see the patterns develop uh, pretty well up here. Okay, so we got second and six uh, central uh, back in the shotgun again. They got two wide. Uh, Two split ends to each side. Here comes some motion by Central. This is a little uh, kick here. And Sis. What was that, Cy? <laughs> it almost looked like he wanted a quick kick, and then he decided to run with it. Yeah, I think he was faking it to the outside and uh, followed his uh, fullback up over to the right side, up toward the right tackle. But I remember, did you see his hand movement? Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it looked like he wanted a quick kick. Plays designed by, uh, by uh, to do a little deception, obviously, with the motion coming back across. And uh, so we got third in about three for Central on their own 39. Bettendorf lining up in their 5-2 defense. And this is James Thomas. Now I believe he's going to be a little short, Jess. I'll let you call it. Uh, short. Okay, there you heard it, folks. Oh, here comes the chain gang in. It's going to be real close. He could have made it. We have an official timeout for measurement. That was James Thomas, number four, carrying the football for Central. The uh, fine, speedy uh, tailback, 160-pound uh, uh, senior, and uh, just run a. Sorry, I called it wrong the last time. Can, can I even even the? Oh, I think here? I think you're uh, two for two. You bet. <laughs> And yeah, another great, great job by the eagle eye Jess yeah, Medina. I'm, I'm much better at calling plays than I am calling the first downs. I've been pretty good at calling plays. That's right. We'll especially, give you credit for that. Especially onside kicks. <clears throat> and those quarterback sneaks. That's right. But what's amazing about that call you just made is over here in front of the Bettendorf bench, and I can't even see you out there until about uh, four yards on the field. So that was really a great call. Anyhow. First down for Central on the uh, on their own 42. Andy Erpelling coming over the ball. 230 pound, six foot four senior. And 
central in a shotgun with three receivers to the right and uh, thrown wide to uh, intended for uh, James Thomas, I believe, number four. That ball looked like it slipped a little bit, Jess. It's, yeah. It's, it's uh, certainly not getting any nicer out here tonight, is it? Well, at least it's not raining yeah. anymore. And, and I, I think the wind might be down just a little bit look, from looking at the flags. It's still coming down the field pretty good from our, uh, from our right to left. So we got second and ten. Central back in the gun with three receivers to the left side. Dropped Oops, the ball. Dropped the ball, but recovered and uh, made a nice pass. The pass was number to uh, 30. number 30, John Lee. And uh, a little gainer there on the play. It'll be third and seven. Coleman was on the tackle. Rob, Rob Colvin, the, uh, one of the Bettendorf linebackers on the tackle. Very mobile young man, Rob Colvin. I think these are two very good linebackers of Bettendorf's. Uh, Wenzel, Chris Wenzel, number 44, and Rob Colvin, number 37. And Central has uh, three receivers to the near side and in the shotgun formation. I oh, it's it. picked. And that's picked off. We were just talking about uh, uh, Bettendorf's uh, linebackers, and that's Rob Colvin on the interception over there, Jess. Yeah, they were trying to throw back to the weak side where the where there's not nearly as much coverage, and uh, Colvin was back in his hook uh, coverage position and just stepped over in front of the ball, and we got first down uh, Bettendorf on the, on the central uh, 43, it looks like. And... Uh, here comes Jim McCarthy, number 55 over the ball, the center for Bettendorf. Cy so wants to give the, um, the uh, Bettendorf offensive line again. Okay, Bettendorf offensive line. Uh, as we mentioned before, Tim McCarthy at center, the 230-pound uh, junior, number 55. At one guard, uh, Chad Burke, number 67, is a 270-pound junior. And uh, Mike Schlosser, number 70, uh, senior. And the tackles, Adam Fay, number 76. And Andy Gnadovich, number 72. <coughs> There's a little fade pattern. That's going to be picked. Intercepted. Yep. <laughs> and is that, uh, it looked like McBride again on, uh, on Ricky McBride on the interception over there. Well, Smith dropped back and tried to throw what we call the fade pattern. They just send a wide receiver streaking down the field and you loft the ball high, but it's tough to do on McBride because he can fly awfully well. He can fly the football, and, and that's what happened. He made the pick over there, fine defensive play by uh, Ricky McBride. So Central's going to take over on their own 16 or, yeah, 16-yard line, and are pelling up on the ball. Central back in the gun with two receivers to both sides. A lot of time to throw. Wobbly pass. Yep. yep. I, I think it slipped out of his hand. That was a slick ball again. That was intended for number 80, Kyle Gott, for Central. And uh, once again, that thing just looked like a wounded. Yeah, duck it did. It's. Out of his hand. That's a slippery ball, and you throw a wobble into that wind, and it's going to look uh, look even uglier. But he's throwing some nice passes tonight. And I don't think they're done throwing the football. It's second 10, back in the same formation. Oh, fumble. Oh, fumble the ball. He's oh, and down. he's going to down it. So that's going to be a big loss for Central back there. Actually, the snap from center wasn't that bad. It hit him a little bit higher than the chest and to one side, but uh, Sis just dropped the ball and uh, thought he better flop on it rather yeah, than uh, let Bettendorf uh, re recover it. I was so. kind of wondering if he took his eye off the ball because he just missed it. Yeah, yeah, could have, could have. So we got third and about 21. And that's, and that's not what Central wanted right here. No, that's they're, you're exactly right. Here comes their trips formation again to the right side, to the near side here. Shotgun. 
And it's complete over there on the far side, thrown out of bounds by uh, number 37, by Colvin again. And that's going to be fourth uh, down. Dave McDonald, yeah, and that'll be fourth down. Uh, Once again, McDonald is favorite target. Right. Good, uh, kind of a wobbly throw again, but, but uh, McDonald was open enough to to wait, be able to wait for the football and uh, get a nice gainer out of him. That's good because it's fourth down. They're going to have to punt. That gives them just a little more room to operate. So we got uh, Hanson back to kick. Brian Hanson, number one. Bet North's going to return. Close to being blocked. Whoops. Now we got a fumbled ball by Numkina. Grabs it himself and. Uh, Gets a little bit of return out of it. Numkina doing a good job there. He tried to field the ball in the air, Jess, and wound up dropping it, but he got a bounce. And, uh, well, he was lucky. He was really kind of a line drive, yeah. and nobody was around him. Yeah, you could see because the wind. Everything would have been a little bit higher. Yeah, you could, you could see the wind just hold that ball up, and, and Numkina had, had to really speed up to get underneath it to even touch it. So a little break there for Bettendorf, uh, well, recovering like, their own fumble. Looks like all the breaks are going Bettendorf's way. First and 10 on the central 34, and there's Numkina right off right goes. tackle. He's going to go. He's going to go. Oh. He's going to score. <laughs> Numkina scores for Ben oh. Yep. Numkina, Jess. He got, you know, we talk about Numkina. I think the last time we did Ben we talked about Numkina rather than juke to the outside and juke the defender he likes to hit him and that's what he did that time and the defender didn't get it wrapped up so he wound up uh, knocking the defender down and going in for the score so about uh, 33 yard uh, touchdown just just a nice effort it really was it was just a power run by Numkina and that's what he does he does well high snap but a nice job by the holder and uh, very nice job there by Sam DeTrent because the snap was high and he just jumped up and snagged it and came back down, put it down, and Char kicked it through. So we got a 21 to nothing ball game, Jess, uh, with eight minutes to go here in the third uh, period. And Central's going to have to get going here a little bit. Well, that was just some good blocking out front to get him loose. It really was. And then the rest was done by Numkina. You're right. Wide open off tackle. And uh, Numkina, you're right. Numkina knocked over the uh, one of the defenders over there. Kind of looked like a bowling ball. Yeah, he did. He, he did. was just, the bowling ball yep. and the other guys were the fins. That's uh, a lot of power in that running. Okay. Uh, Shara getting ready to kick off. Looks like the officials are going to exchange a couple of footballs just for the fun. Well, I think if you're central now, you, you mentioned about them passing. I think we're really going to see some passing Yeah, now. they're going to they're uh, have to continue down, that. It was the last game of the season. They're down 21 to nothing. Uh, you know, you're not yep. saving anything for tomorrow. Right. Well, I think what we had going into this game tonight was we have a team in Bettendorf who's going to make the playoffs. I don't think there's any question about it, whether win or lose tonight. And we had a team in Central who came in 4-4. Four and four, And as a former coach, a winning season means a great deal to a, to a team. And uh, Central wanted to come out of here tonight 5-4. and four. And this game's not over, but they're going to have to get going a little bit. There, uh, there's an example of how... Uh, Shark and kick the ball. Ball bounced on about the three and into the end zone. So Central's going to take over on their own 20. The ball being kicked into the end zone. Twenty-one zero here at Tuvel Stadium in Bettendorf. This is Cox Cable Channel 38. And a Family Ties production. And Family Ties production. Sorry about that. I never remember that big title. But <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sis back to throw and just underthrown over there. Number 42 got a hand on yeah. it. Who's the quarterback? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, we. Ha I'm sorry. Okay, we have uh, Mike Nelson. Yeah, Mike Nelson, number 10 in for Central. Uh, 175 pound senior. I, I was wondering why he had on a clean Yeah, we, and a little his jersey is a little conspicuous there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Bright uh, white, and compared to uh, ten other muddy shirts. 
And a little inside trap there to uh, the fullback. Joe Hildebrand's going to pick up a yard or two there. It's going to be third and eight. It's kind of funny though, Si. You, look, you know, I'm looking here on the screen and uh, then pants of Bettendorf. Aren't they supposed to be uh, that kind of yellow or gold? Well, I think they're gold. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be gold. But uh, I would say mud and gold mud. tonight. <laughs> mud and gold, huh? Okay. Uh, Number 56 just came in. He looks like he has a clean jersey on. He must a different player. Four Central. Okay, trips to the near side, one back, and uh, Nelson under. A little pressure, and he's going to be sacked. 35, yep. and... Yep, he's going to be sacked on the uh, safety blitz, I believe. Uh, number, yeah, number 42 for, for uh, Bettendorf is Adam Doder, Dorder. Uh, 175 pound senior. And 35 was? Uh, 35 also in on that yep. was uh, Dan Schmidt. Six foot, 195 pound junior for the Bedendorf Bulldogs. And now it's fourth and a bunch and Central's gonna have to kick it out of there again into this win. It's a tough task, but Hanson uh, being a little bit pressured there, but got to kick off. Numkina fields it cleanly and gets a little bit of yardage back. Down to the 33-yard line of yep. Central. Excellent field position. Yep, great field position. And I have no idea who made that tackle because of the mud on the shirts. Blame me, Si. I was supposed to be looking. <laughs> yeah, but I don't even think you could help that situation. <laughs> We'll have a timeout. Okay. We got a timeout central here, I believe, yeah, and uh, that'll give us time again to identify these linemen. I, you know what? Uh, being an old lineman myself and uh, coaching the uh, offensive line and, uh, for all these years, uh, I'm kind of partial to these guys that don't get their name on the tube very much. Uh, and uh, so let's set that Bettendorf offensive line again. Uh, I see a 70, well, 72 yeah. in there, Ganadovich. Yeah, we're probably getting some new people out here. Uh, Ganadovich at tackle, number 72, and and I believe Chad Burke's still in, number 67 at guard, and McCarthy at center, number 55, Schlosser at uh, senior uh, guard, and Adam Fay, I believe, is uh, in at uh, the other tackle, 260-pound junior. And uh, Austin Chesney is a split in. And uh, Dean Sparks, number five, I believe, is still in. I see number seven. Is it number seven? Did you call it? And number, number, yeah, we've got some new people in the game now. Number one, uh, Nick uh, Daner in for Bettendorf at uh, split in. Okay, Numkina for just a. Up the middle, uh, gain of about a yard. Defensively uh, for Central, played pretty well in the middle uh, this evening so far. Uh, number 76, Doug Nixon, big 270-pound senior for uh, Coach Wilkinson's Blue Devils. Andy Erpelding, number 51 at uh, one of the down linemen. Eric Hike, one of the down linemen. Holcomb, number 83, one of the down linemen. And uh, full back off tackle again to the left side for for Bendorf. I believe that's Numkina again. No, I'm sorry, that's uh, McFedry's with the ball there, so he must learn a little isolation play off to the left number left one, side. Number one is in the ball game. Number one for uh, yeah, number one for uh, Bettendorf is uh, Daner, I believe we'll pronounce it. And uh, Sam D. Trent back in with the play. And here comes McCarthy on the ball. Bettendorf in the I formation with two wides to the far side. Here's the option. Lead option. Numkina with a good block out there, but McFedrich ran into him. <laughs> yep. Pretty good pursuit by the uh, central defense there, Jess, on that on that option play. Yeah, they, they sniffed they that out pretty well. Out well. 
Uh, Namkina was out in front of that for the block, but uh, I don't think McFedrich could slow down that time due to that. It's right in a muddy spot right there. I don't think he could throw uh, slow down enough to to let the play develop. So number, number four is in. Okay, number four. That's Marshall Frazier bringing the play in for Bettendorf. <laughs> And we got a fourth and about uh, nine here. We got twins out here on the uh, left side, and uh, Bettendorf's going to have a motion penalty. Yeah, it is the quarterback, which still declined since the pass was incomplete, yeah. I guess, but the quarterback moved. Yeah, we had a, we also had a twins formation out here on the left side, what we call twins, two wide receivers very close together, and the inside receiver was not set. So. Uh, Central will decline that penalty. It's going to be first down the Blue Devils on the on their own 32, I believe it is. And this will be as good a field position as Central's had for a couple of quarters here, Jess, because they've been they just been down in their own inside their own 25 a lot. It seems like. Yeah, it's 2:21 left in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Score: uh, Bettendorf 21, Danforth Central nothing. Here comes Central uh, with Mike Nelson at the quarterback position now. Number 10. And a give to uh, James Thomas. A nice run off the left side for about a six, seven yard gain. But, but Cy, you know, whether, whether you're on the winning end or, or the losing end of a game like this, you know, you really have to respect the kids who go out and make the effort and and sacrifice what they're what they're doing, as opposed to doing what you know. Oh, that's uh, I think what, what they could be doing. That's a great point, Jess. The kids work hard at what they do, whether they win or lose. They're out there. They're trying hard, and uh, that's a great point to make. And, and this is John Lee at tailback, and he'll have a first down for uh, Central at uh, about their own 43. Yeah, going back to that again. Uh, uh, you, di you just don't, unless you've played the game of football and been around it very closely, uh, it's hard to understand the amount of work it goes into just to participate in athletics in high school. Right, and it's just not the major sports. Right. It's, it's the, oh, there's uh, no question. The cross country, whether it be boys or girls or, or volleyball, girls volleyball, uh, here here in the fall season or golf or tennis, uh, it takes a tremendous sacrifice. It surely does. And a little isolation play toward the left side from Central. There's stuff pretty good by a whole bunch of, as you would say, just a host of black John shirts Lee over there. there. <laughs> but I, John Lee carried the ball. We'll steal that from the public ad, public address announcer. But uh, I'll I tell you, what, one of the uh, <coughs> one of the coaches on, on the Illinois side, uh, Dan McGuire. You, you ever listen mm -hmm. to him talking about a team effort? That everything is a team effort, and and uh, just his concept of, of what he does. Is and, and a lot of the other coaches are like that too, but, but, you know, and and he realizes what a sacrifice that it is. Well, yep, oh, he does. Fumble. Yep. Fumble. Uh, fumble the center snap there, but it's recovered by Hillebrand for the Blue Devils, so uh, that'll cost him a down. That's going to bring up, uh, going to bring up third and about 14. And, and I guess the point about the sacrifice that, <clears throat> that I'd like to make is, you know, we bring, we bring. The Quad Cities, the football games, or, or any other sport. Mm -hmm. But we would certainly like to encourage uh, the people in different school districts to to go support your school, support your, right. your athletes, support your students, and you know, in whatever they do, it could be banned. It doesn't have to be sports. Okay, nice throw. Uh, nice throw by Mike Nelson over the middle. You know, support your school, find out what's going on. Right down by Ron you know, and uh, let the I agree. Kids, let the, let I the agree. kids know who He's make the sacrifices and who are representing your school in a positive way or your community in a positive way to let them know that you enjoy or like what they are doing. And, and we would certainly encourage, and the, for the most part, the football season is over for most of these teams, but basketball season is going to be kind of go to a boys basketball game go to a girls basketball game or whatever sport could be coming up 
and, and go to your school. Find out what's going on in the schools. Believe me, folks, there are a lot of good, positive things happening at the schools. Yeah, you know, while we're on that, one more thing about it. I, a lot of people do not realize what a fine athletic area the Quad Cities is. And we just have some great athletes that come out of there, uh, many former pros, and uh, this is just a great brand of athletics around uh, the Quad City area, both both sides of the river, and uh, it's just uh, fun to be out and fun to watch and fun to support them. And uh, we just like to encourage everybody to get out there and, and, and support the high school athletics. And if we've missed something, folks, if we don't know about it, we can't show it. <laughs> and if you would just call Cox Communications, they'll give you they'll give you my number because we certainly would like to show as much as we can. And Central is punting away the ball. Okay. Start of the fourth quarter. Numkina feels the ball and uh, gets uh, loose on the left side over there. Good return uh, up to about the 40. So Bettendorf will have a first down on their own 40, and they're going into the win now. And we still got a 21. I'll tell you, this game is not out of reach for the Central Blue Devils. A couple breaks, and uh, they've got the win this fourth quarter. And it's the score is 21 to nothing here, so it's certainly not, certainly not out of reach for them. And I'm going to stop my preaching after this, but if, <laughs> but, but if there is an event, okay. if there is an event that, that you think is important, and that we might be interested in showing, give Cox Communications a call. They will get you in touch with me, and and if we have the time, and you know, we will show it. But we don't. We can't show it if we don't know about it. And just give Cox Communications a call, and they will get you in touch with me. But out of the game. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we got all those plugs in, didn't we? I, it's truly important, I think, in uh, high school. Well, this, okay, we well, got this has uh, been fun, Cy. And you know, this is your first year. Oh, this is a great. This has been a great fun. I. And this is our first year on the Iowa side, and we just—it's been—it's been great. Certainly enjoyed it. It's Fumble. Fumble. Looked like the pitch uh, by Smith to, to uh, McFedrick. Looked like it hit him on the hip and just and dropped it. straight down. But McFedrick's recovered it. Yep. So it'll be uh, hey, you, uh, about a five-yard loss on the play. And third and or be a third and about 15. They said the popcorn's half price now. Oh. Uh, hey, we told we told the Bettendorf people we would we would we would rate their. Pork chops. Oh, that's right. We got <laughs> so we got to think about you that. You know, we got we got pork chops at North Scott. We got them at uh, PV. We got them at Bettendorf. We got them at Brady Street. When uh, I'll tell you what. Well, there was some movement up front. I don't. No, nope, no they uh, it must have been set. And this is Smith just kind of scrambling for whatever he can get there. A little bit of confusion there on. Uh, I think the snap count. I think the center. Uh, Snapped out of just about a count early, but everybody was set, so they got away with it. It'd be fourth and about uh, nine here. So Bettendorf. Yeah, there looks like they're gonna. Uh, yeah, they're gonna punt the ball. Jason Smith back to punt. Jason, uh, fine Bettendorf quarterback. Also the punting duties and. Not a real great kick, but it'll get the job done. That puts uh, Central back in their own territory at about the 40-yard line. And it'll be first and 10, Central at their own 40. And they need to get something going, Jess. They've got 9.25 left on the board down there, and it's 21-0. Bettendorf. Sai, any uh, any uh, insight in the first round pairings for the uh, Iowa playoffs? Little, uh, yeah, oh, I'll get back to it. Oops. And James Thomas carrying the ball, a good gain, about a 13 yard gain, though. So it'll be first down on a Bettendorf uh, 40, about the 47 yard line. Yeah, getting back to your question, Jess, uh, it, I think it looks to me like, uh, I believe anyway, that well, we Bettendorf and Assumption will have another, uh, will have a first round rematch. That's what I believe. I haven't seen that yet, but I, there's only two teams 
I'm pretty sure there's only two teams going to make it out of the MAC conference, and that's Bettendorf and Assumption. And they're going to play each other first round. You can bet on it. Isolation play. James Thomas. Uh, nice, nice defensive play. Uh, we get the number here. Looks like uh, number 42 on the play. Uh, you have somebody hurt? We have official timeout. Yeah, we got a player down. Tackle was made by Adam Dorder there. Fine play. Well, let's take a break while they look at this player. Okay, and uh, we'll do that. <laughs> well, you can see whoever that player is is walking off the field. Yeah, we'd like to identify him for you, but uh, it can't be done, folks. <laughs> you can see for yourself. Yeah. He just but he looks like him. he's okay, Jess. Looks like he's walking off under his own power. Might have hurt a maybe a shoulder or an arm, upper something, upper body. Okay, Central is second and about uh, long nine and shotgun. Trips formation to the far side. Nelson back to throw. Oh, it's going to be picked. Very well done by the Bettendorf defender. And uh, ball was def uh, intercepted by... Uh, 28? At 28? Yeah, number 28 is it? Craig Cook, 175-pound senior for the Bulldogs. Fine defensive play. Nelson just kind of underthrew that ball just a little bit. Didn't quite get enough zip on it. And, uh, okay. Detrent in at uh, quarterback now for the Bendor Bulldogs. He's a junior, uh, plays cornerback for him defensively. But uh, as I said earlier, Coach uh, Hobanek is high on this young man as a possible quarterback uh, for them next year. And the handoff to uh, Numkina, and he's, he's, he's uh, met right he, at the line. <laughs> yeah, he's stuffed pretty good. That's going to be about a two-yard two loss they, there. They give the tackle to Doug Nixon. Right. Nixon on the tackle for Central. He's their uh, one of their 275-pound uh, uh, senior down lineman. He's a big, strong young man, Nixon. Bettendorf now in the I formation. This is Detrent on the pitch. And Mc McFedry's is tackle for about a yard loss there by... Uh, uh, oh, we can't tell. Looks like number 63, I think, Jess. That would be Jeff Huntington, 6'1", 230-pound senior. Good defensive play there. In our maiden year in the MAC Conference, I, I would just like to thank the MAC Conference for allowing us to, to do these football games. Uh, and the athletic directors, Chuck Nolding here in Bettendorf, Don Grensing at Central, Deb Menke at uh, North Scott. Uh, who's the athletic director of West? At uh, Bob McDonald over McDonald west and um, north, yeah, Mel Warner or oh. Mel Warner and north and sack and, and whoa and, 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 and he went sliding a the little. Trent has ripped down. <laughs> by Dyson Miguel. And Dyson Miguel, one of the fine linebackers for Central, number 65, if you could see it, uh, just shot through there and uh, I threw uh, threw the Trent down. I think I give him a. Uh, uh, Eight on the tackle and a nine-five on the slide. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Throw was a little high, huh? Okay, Bettendorf punt formation. Who's playing the belly athletic director? Oh, Ted Minnick. We Ted forgot Manic. to mention Ted Minnick or PV. Thanks. I'm glad you remember that, Teddy. A great friend of mine. And the ball rolled dead on the 28-yard line. It'd be Central's ball, first and 10. On the 28. And Don Grinzing over Central. We didn't mention him either. He's yes, I all these. Uh, I mentioned. Okay. I can't forget Don. All these ads are really taking care of us and gave us space in their press boxes so we could run the games and uh, just a just a fun year, Jess. I appreciate it. Well, it's it's been it's been exciting. It really has. We miss our partner uh, Dan Burridge tonight, but he's got to got to take care of that golden throat. He's on the radio and uh, does our broadcast with us. We really enjoy working with Dan. I want to thank him, too, for carrying me all year long. Okay, Central up in the I formation. Fumble. Nelson. Nope. 
But the now center, they blew that. Is that the uh, center running with the ball? No, that's. <laughs> that's 23, 73 or 23. <laughs> yeah, that looks like Huntington with the ball. So the ball. Yeah, they blew the they blew the play dead with illegal procedure against Central, but <laughs> the snap from center went straight down, and I think Huntington picked it up and uh, was gonna going to go for a pretty large gainer there. Might be Josh Lane, number 66. We can't tell at this and, point. And he was saying, but Coach, I was open. Mm -hmm. He was on a roll, too. <laughs> okay, first and 15. Nelson on the ball. Here comes the play. They wanted to run the other time, and that's, uh, I believe that's James Thomas. Yes. James Thomas for, no, it's not either. That's, uh, that's number 14 for Central. Uh, that is Sean Tavir, uh, Tavernier. Boy, oh, I stumbled on that one, Jess. Sean T. Sean T, yeah. Sean T on the carry. Five-yard gainer. We got second and ten. We got an official timeout here because it looks equipment, like uh, it looks like uh, Giles is having a little problem with his hat there. I believe that's Giles number uh, for Bettendorf number forty-two. Is it? And we want you fans to remember to continue to watch for us during basketball season. We're still going to be here on. Cox Communications, channel 38. Sorry, you're not going to join us for basketball, huh? Well, I'm just going to take a little break for the fall, I think. Sorry, you can't golf in the winter. <laughs> McBride, McBride on a 10-yard gain there, but we got a flag. I bet we're probably going to have a hold here. Uh, nope, we got a low block indicated by the official. Uh, and I probably should explain the low block rule in high school football. You cannot block below the waist in uh, high school football uh, outside of a line uh, four yards uh, from either side of the ball. And uh, that what that basically amounts to is from tackle to tackle and two yards deep on either side of the ball. So if you can, uh, if you can visualize that, and that's a heck of a deal uh, for the officials to call, but it's pretty obvious when it happens when you block below the waist. It's a safety rule. Anytime you protect the needs of the kids, I think it's a good rule. So. Uh, back to the basketball, I <coughs> probably would do a kind of a disservice <laughs> doing basketball. I played a little high school basketball, but Central in the shotgun. This is Nelson running a little bit for his life here. Oh, ooh. Yeah, either the ball was tipped or it slipped out of his hand over there because number six from Bettendorf, uh, Jason Sage, just about picked it off. I think it slipped out of his hand. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of the pass that UT did in the end zone last week, last week up at Sterling. And uh, it went for a safety. Uh, it just fell right out of the, the yep. quarterback's hand. Yeah. As we said before, it's wet out there. It's yeah, muddy. It really is, and it's uh, 423 left to go in the fourth quarter. Dan Danforth Central is trailing 21 to nothing, and it's third and uh, 20. Central and shotgun trips formation. Uh oh, uh, yep, the ball uh -oh. just. That was almost trouble. Yeah, throwing to McBride. Just throwing a little bit high, and they had a little zip on it, and uh, McBride couldn't handle it. So uh, Central's going to have to punt the ball away down there. If they don't, uh, at this point, I think they're going to give them uh, give them too good a field position, Jess. So and it's fourth and about 18. <laughs> So Hanson's back. I don't know how many punts he's had tonight. Uh, he's had some good punts, and he's punted five or six, I'm sure. Had a, one of them blocked. Beautiful spiral kick. And McFedries fields the ball at the 42-yard line of Bettendorf. So uh, it'll be a first and 10 Bettendorf. And we got some new shirts in, I think, for Bettendorf. 
Number 81 in the game, uh, Chris Sodak. Uh, number five. Number 81 and number five. That's uh, Sparks. He's oh, okay. He's been Sparks there. is uh, seven's the quarterback. Yep. Okay, yeah, Trent, Detrent, 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 yeah, Sam Detrent still in a QB. It looks like uh, McCarthy, number 55, over the ball. He's still in. This is McFedries for about a five-yard gain. Tackled by Kenny Gile, number 42 for Central. Well, this is the last football game that most of these seniors will play, Jess, and this is a this is something that they never high school football is something you just don't ever forget, and uh, very very few kids go on to play any further than this level. And you hope, as uh, spectators and coaches, that it's been a good experience for them. Okay, Detrent under ball and just barely gets the ball off to uh, Numkina. I don't know whether that was just. A bad snap or yeah, we're going to have a illegal procedure. Yeah, I think it was a late snap. I think everybody went on one and the ball was snapped on two. Okay, number 29 in the game for Bettendorf. That's Jason Barber, 145-pound uh, junior flanker for Bettendorf. Central for Central, a couple uh, clean shirts in the game now. Number 67, Matt Riedel, one of the down people. There's a pitch out to Frazier, and he's going to go around the left side. Got a little room out there. <laughs> Fraser, the pitch was a little bit out in front of him, and he uh, bobbled a little bit. But once he got control of it and got a little steam going, he gained up, uh, picked up about three yards. Two forty-nine left in the in the game. Two forty-nine. I've got number eighty-four in the game for Bettendorf, uh, Tyler Kulig, a six-foot, one hundred seventy-five-pound senior. Nick Dinner back in the Daner back in the game. Guessing on the pronunciation, my uh, my apologies to mom and dad for that. Detrent underneath. Pitch. Little option play coming. This is Fraser again. Fraser looks quick, Jess. Yeah. Got some quick feet, doesn't he? Look real quick out there in that mm -hmm. I mean, he just just seemed like it didn't even bother him. Detrent, uh, good job on the option there, hanging on to the ball till the very last second. The defender's in his face and pits the ball, and that's the way you got to execute that play. Well, number one, he said is da Daner. I, I would say it's Daner. I went to school with a with a Mike Daner. All right. And he pronounced it Daner. And E H pronounces an A. Sounds good to me. And. Smith calls a timeout. They're back in punt formation. Must not have, uh, I believe they've only got uh, 10 men on the field, Jess. So, uh, oh, McFedry's now coming back out. get the special teams coach growly that always makes you look bad and you only got 10 people out there on the special teams punt formation 
Yeah, I'm sure McFedridge is over by the bench shooting the breeze with the boys about how the their upcoming game uh, Wednesday night. Their playoff game coming. There's 2:06 left in this game, and uh, right at this point, it would take some kind of miracle for Central to get back in it. And we got a couple more uh, clean shirts in for the Blue Devils. Well, it might be no. 21 to nothing, but I'll tell you what, uh, Central has not given up. Yep, they played they hard tonight. Hard. And if not for a couple bad breaks, and a very short punt again the by punt uh, Smith, but the Blue Devils yard line. yeah, he's just. Smith was getting some heavy pressure there by uh, Riedel coming from that right side over there, so uh, consequently didn't get a real good punt, uh, punt off. But well, it looks like a lot of new shirts in there. Yep. We'll try to identify Seven, these. Uh, 71. Some new shirts as we go here. 24. 71 for uh, 71 for Central would be Joe Wolf, 200-pound senior at one of the down. Uh, 20. One of the guards, number 20 for Central, Marvin Mallory, 135-pound uh, junior. Ooh, he got uh, hit. Yeah, he got a nice hit in there by number 35 from Bettendorf, uh, Dan Schmidt, uh, reserve uh, linebacker. There's a 71 for Bettendorf. Number 93 in the game for uh, the Bulldogs uh, defensively is John Baker, a 200-pound senior. Number 34 into the game for uh, Central, Aaron Shearer, is uh, six foot in, junior end. Good defensive play there by number 85 from Bendorf, Nick Bates, and also uh, had help had help from uh, not Nature. My mistake. Number Scott Shara playing a little bit of corner over here. He was in on that tackle. Number nine's in a quarterback now. Okay. Central. Jeff Schaefer, the Central quarterback, 155 pound junior. And it'll give up the middle. That'll be the last play of the game. Yep. Ticking off the last 10 seconds here. And again, Jess, a uh, little bit of a wrap up as uh, they probably won't, don't know if we'll get another playoff or not. Doesn't look like it, but. Uh, Bettendorf uh, winning the game tonight, uh, 21 to nothing, and uh, Davenport Central played well. I think they played well. It just made a couple of very costly mistakes, and uh, and as always, Coach Hobbinick's Bulldogs take advantage of those mistakes. And that uh, this is our last uh, Iowa broadcast of the year in the regular season, and uh, looks like we're going to have a playoff game. I think Wednesday night. Uh, with Davenport Assumption and uh, uh, the and Bettendorf and Bulldogs. And was a little luck and mm -hmm. a little persuasion. We might be able to do that, but I'm not. Far. But I'm not holding my breath on it. Far uh, reaching that we might be able to do a playoff game, but uh, we certainly hope so. But again, uh, my thanks to you for allowing me to do these games with you, and I've certainly enjoyed it. Well, it's and been a pleasure having you and Dan do this. and. I'm um, looking forward to having you back again next year. Well, good. I appreciate that, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be back with you. Uh, for uh, Cox Cable Channel 38, Family Ties Productions, we're signing off. Thank you.